welcome to the Make Life Fun Show. I'm your host, Josie Wheatman, and I am so excited that you're here. I have graduated the mom game. I have been in it now for almost a year. Can you believe it? Everett is walking. Wow, it's a whole new game. Through the last 25 episodes, I have learned so much and I have grown in my craft. I have grown as a mom. And the biggest thing I've learned is just love, 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 taking it in, giving it out, love, and being in the present moment with my son and continuously just giving him my regulated self as often as I can. And that is what's changing the game in motherhood. That is what's breaking my generation of parenting. If you are new to listening, you are in for a treat. Hello friends, welcome back to the Make Life Fun Show. I am so excited that you're back with us. Today on the show, I have Amy Rimple and she is gonna be with us to talk about energetics and clearing the crap. <laughs> and <laughs> I am so excited for her to explain to you what exactly that means. And this is something that I I can feel in my heart is going to help you. So listen up. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to have you here. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and about this clearing the crap and the energetics yeah. to get to. <laughs> yes, tell us a little bit about what brought you on this journey and where this started for you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess it was oh, at least, I think it was like four years ago now, I had started a new business and I was hitting the same level of sales every single month. Like it did not fail. And it was almost like there was something in my brain that was just stopping me mm -hmm. from moving forward and to growing and getting bigger. And I had heard about tapping, but I didn't really understand it and know how to do it properly. And just, I just didn't know yet. So I had gone to a networking event and it was, this was during the day. It was just like a little coffee meetup thing. And I met this tapping practitioner and she's also a Reiki master. And she said, oh, well, you should come to my workshop. It's tonight. I'm like, done. Like meant to be, I'm going. And it was so interesting because going there, what I thought I was I guess, scared of or worried about, it wasn't, it was actually the opposite. So I always thought I had this fear of failure, but I kept failing very well. So I was like, that doesn't really add up. What I actually was, was I was fearful of success. And the reason being is what that brought up for me was that there was this fear of like judgment, I think, this fear of like, when you are successful, there's a lot more responsibility that comes along with that. And so it was really interesting to be able to like work through that and then tap on that. And what happened was, I remember this was a Thursday, this was February. So it was a short month. And in order to meet my new goal that I'd never achieved before, I had five days to double my sales volume. And I did it in three days after that session. Yeah. So you can imagine my eyes were just like wide open to this new way of thinking and this new mindset and also these new modalities that I had never really known before. And so that's when I knew I had to get into this and I had to help other women do the same thing because this is real and this works. So what I did was um, along the way, I actually became a certified aromatherapist, a Reiki practitioner and an emotional freedom technique practitioner doing the exact same thing and helping women clear their mindsets, clear their crap, right? That's what I was saying before. And really it is, it's just like we, it's almost like I picture like these cobwebs in our brain that are like getting in the way of these proper thought patterns that we, we want to have, but we can't quite get there. And so we got to like clear them out of the way so we can move forward and create these new thought patterns so we can succeed in whatever way that looks like. That might not be financially, that might be with relationships, right? Or in, in many different capacities. Yes. And I, oh my gosh. So I'm going to unpack a little bit of what you said to me that resonated is that you're saying that you had this belief and you thought it was one thing. And then after doing the work, you figured out it was completely, mm -hmm. completely different. And being able to work on that belief, you were able to shift that for yourself yeah. through these modalities. And I think the one of the things that you said as a belief is that the more responsibilities, like we have more, it's more responsibility. So maybe I'm just going to keep myself playing small mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of really blooming yeah. and showing up. So I know that is big for the moms that are listening, that topic of, it's a lot. I already have a lot on my plate. Like, how can I? And yes. so I would love for you to speak to that. 
So something I learned along the way is there's no such thing as balance. I believe there's actually seasons in our mm -hmm. life. And I actually was taught this a very long time ago when I have, my kids are a bit older now, but my daughter, I think it was, she wasn't even a year old at this point. And I got to go away on a little woman's retreat for two days. And one of the older, wiser women, she's a grandmother. In fact, I was talking to her and I was like, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Like I, like in terms of helping like my community, for example, like volunteering. And she goes, it's okay. You don't have to right now, right now. You just, your daughter just needs you to be her mom right now. And that's okay. That's good enough. And I also look at it like, you know, we're raising the next generation. That's a really important job. So for me to be able to focus on that a bit more, especially at the beginning was very important. And I, and I recognize that it's not to say I didn't do other things, of course, but I knew where my priorities laid in that moment and at that time in my life. And then once my kids got a bit older, you know, they were in school full time, you know, then that shifted. Then I got to look at what, what do I want to do? And that's when I started, you know, looking at, you know, starting my own businesses and things like that. Yes. Oh, I love that. The seasons. But yeah, it is. it's like every season, just like right now, it feels so fresh with, with us going into the spring, it feels so great. Right. It's so new. And that's kind of such a great, brilliant way for us to look at our own lives that we have seasons in that ebb and flow. And yes, it could feel like a lot right now. But mm -hmm. if we prioritize what's most important, then we could just kind of go from there. So how did you find the confidence to start working into this field because that's a big one too the moms that are listening is that qualified piece like am i really qualified to do this mm. is oh, i've gosh, been a mom no. <laughs> i've been a mom i've either the moms that have stayed home or the moms that are working let's say in corporate and they had to take that break you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I do. So it is huge. And I'm still working on it to be perfectly honest. This is an ongoing struggle for me. So I really had, I really struggled with imposter syndrome. One of the money blocks that I teach on is competency mm -hmm. and competency is like, I need to do, let me do this one more certification. Let me do this one more thing for free. To, so then I look really good and then I can charge more, or I can actually feel like what I'm charging is worth my, is worth it for them. Mm -hmm. Right. And that was huge for me. And there was this like pivotal moment that I was working with a business coach uh, about a year, a year and a bit ago. I was working on my, the course that I now have, and she was helping me with this. And I was like really stuck on certain elements of it and finishing it. And she was like, Amy, what are you talking about? You have so many gifts you have. And she's naming all of these things that I've done, like the you know, being a best-selling author, my energetics work, she's like, incorporate this uniqueness of you into this. And I was, it would literally, it's amazing when you're so close to yourself or so close to a project that you cannot see how great it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you have to, sometimes you need that external validation. And that's why, and that's what I see even with like my clients is like, it really does sometimes take someone looking from the outside in to give you your actual, your truth, your, your re the real perspective of what other people are seeing. And so that was a pivotal moment. And my, my confidence has just steadily increased from there. I am constantly learning because that's just my personnel. I can't stop for some reason, but that's great. Like I just added on to everything else that I do. So it's, it all works out, but I don't feel like I have to do this in order for me to teach and to have clients and to charge money yeah. for what I do. Yeah. Yes, that's a beautiful answer. Honestly, that imposter syndrome is so, it's so big and it's so ingrained in us to uh, yeah. that we have to get this stamp of approval, this stamp of approval, this stamp of approval, and to step back and look at the gifts that you have and being like, oh my gosh, look at all I have to offer. All I have to bring to the team. Oh yeah. Actually, one of the exercises that I tell my clients to do. So if anybody's struggling with this, I would recommend getting a piece of paper out or your journal. And I want you to write like everything that you've accomplished in your life. And you would be shocked at the things that you've done and how much you've already accomplished in your life. And that was really helpful for me too, to, to see that on, you know, black and white on paper was really helpful. Yes, that's like a hype sheet, hyping yourself up. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, I love that tool, like brain dumping all of your amazing things that you've done onto a piece of paper. And mm -hmm. I, yeah. So, I also would love to know 
how have you used this these tools as far as a mom as well so one thing it taught me was self-care mm -hmm. and the importance of that if i am well and i'm feeling really good i am a much better mother and wife mm -hmm. throughout my life i've had a really hard time acquiring habits and sticking mm -hmm. to them but i have to say as my mindset has shifted and as i've grown and evolved those are becoming a lot easier to do because now I'm like, I want to do them. Yeah. So I am meditating every single day. It might be five minutes, it might be 10 minutes, right? Like it's just, it's really what works for you and how can you fit it in? Because that's how important it is. And that habit, I'm um, also like, I make sure my lunchtime, I go for a walk. It might be 10 minutes and then I go for a you know, longer walk out, like that fresh air just clears your mind. I thankfully have a really supportive partner. So he knows like, if I really need time for myself, I can tell him and he's like, Hey, bye, go like, go have a bath, close the door. Or I'm like, I'm going to my friend's house. I need to like get out of here. Okay, bye, go ahead. Like he's, he's really great like that. And so that really has helped my sanity. But it, but it is really hard to start that, to make that shift because as you know, having like a really little one, they're so dependent on you. And for me to like change how I was, I guess, viewing them that they don't need me as much, that's in itself another mindset shift. <laughs> yes, yes. So it's just coming back. So yeah, so you were speaking of the little ones and mine actually just woke up from a nap. So yeah, <laughs> Everyone's here good now. timing. To hang out with us having the little ones and being so all consuming with having a little one it is it's important to decide on the habit that you're going to to be working on and so i would love to he wants to get in on it <laughs> he, does. he does yes i would love to ask as far as the tapping a lot of people might not know what it is, would you like to speak mm. a little bit more on EFT and emotional freedom techniques? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so it's actually a bit connected to traditional Chinese medicine, right? So we have meridians that go throughout our body in Chinese medicine, but the same thing works with tapping. And the idea is that sometimes these meridians can get blocked. So we want to clear the way to create a little more flow and ease throughout our body. So we have tapping points. So they start usually at the top of your head. You have some like around your eyes, under, under your eyes. And you, you sort of make your way down and then also your wrists. And so that just can actually create the new path, uh, new thought patterns that are stuck, that are maybe negative, that aren't serving you and switching them up. And believe it or not, people on, um, when I do a session, you know, I always say, okay, so whatever they're talking about, I ask them, how do you feel about that from one to 10? One being like, it's the absolute worst thing. 10 being I'm perfectly fine. And by the second tapping round, they're already like, you know, at a seven or an eight, like it actually happens very quickly. And the other thing I really like about it is because some women that I have worked with have um, some trauma, but they don't have to relive it. So what they do is instead of like telling me about it, all they have to do is associate the emotion towards that issue or traumatic experience. And then we actually work on getting rid of that emotion towards it, because that is what can be very triggering when you hear, you know, you see something on social media that triggers that emotional response is what we're trying to switch up. And that can be for a lot of different things, but that's just something that's quite big, you know, in some people's life. Yes. So I love that the tapping on the gradient to move the energy. Is there a quick tool with the tapping that moms could do? Let's say in the moment they're having, mm -hmm. everything is happening. Let's just put me, for example, my this morning, our sound isn't working and <laughs> my son wakes up from a nap. Could you just tap on just one point and yes. get or is it, yeah, I would love to yeah. like a quick thing so, in the moment with all the- Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> for sure you can. So I find just cause it's a comfortable, easy spot. If you feel your collarbone, just the little right underneath your collarbone and like the fleshy part, if you just tap there and be like, take a deep breath and then say whatever is bothering you and to like get it out of you. So for example, you can be like, oh, I'm so angry this morning, but I'm gonna love and accept myself anyway. That's always a really good one to start with and sort of clear that. And you could say that even a couple of times, so that's easy. And then you can add in all the good stuff. So I'm gonna have a much better day today. 
I'm already feeling better. And even like, you know how, when you're sort of like the law of manifestation, when you're saying it in the present moment, even if you don't feel it in that moment, it's going to help change that thought pattern as well. Oh, I love that. Naming the emotion that you're feeling and going through and tapping on that and yeah. to help you calm down. Cause I just did that as you were speaking and I, yeah, instantly brought a smile to my face. It's so, it's so oh, good. Quick how that can shift It, it you. really is. It's incredible. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so quick. It's so incredible how just moving that stagnant energy and naming it can do that for you. <laughs> so I'd love for you to go ahead and speak on what's your offering that you're helping women with and how the listeners can speak with you and celebrate mm-hmm. you and all that good stuff. Absolutely. So about once a month, I do hold a, it's called the dream retreat masterclass where we actually go through the four main types of money blocks and we work on clearing them. And we also, and then I end with a a cord cutting ceremony. So really letting go of that. So the best way to find out when those happen, I charge about, I charge $10 for it. That's it. Just so people make a commitment, right? I find that that's always really important and a commitment to themselves to show up on my Instagram. So rempel.amy is my Instagram account. I always have on my, my link tree link in there. I always have any events coming up, anything like that. My website's on there as well. And they can learn a little bit more about me there, but also sign up for anything that I do have coming up. I also then have my Dream Academy Mastermind. That's my full program. What that looks like is that is a six month membership into a mastermind program where you have 10 modules, which work on the actionable items as well as the mindset issues and clearing and things like that. We have uh, at least two modules where there is uh, tapping involved. That includes also though a monthly Zoom Q&A. So every first Tuesday of the month, we have a one hour, I'm on there live, just chatting, answering questions. That's really specific to your business. So it is for business owners, women business owners. Yeah. And then we do like, you know, I do check-ins in the Facebook group. You can ask questions in there at any time. If you need feedback on something that's ongoing enrollments that can, anyone can come into that at any time. I have a question because it just came to my heart. Why is it, do you think it's so important for moms to do? Cause the self-care piece that we're talking about is so huge and moms are business owners. Why do you think it's so important to do this energetic piece for themselves? I think it goes back to just being able to taking care of yourself first and making your mind right. I mean, if the last two years have taught me anything is someone who had very good mental health when I was stuck with my kids at home so much, that really took a toll. And it was because they needed me so much more at an older age that I wasn't used to. And so being able to then like, okay, recognize it and then doing what I needed to do to get through that. So, yeah, so that's why I think that coming back to that energetic work can help me very quickly. Mm -hmm. And as well, using essential oils, that's another, that's actually another tool that I use. There's a few of them that can actually pass through the blood brain barrier to even further help us with our, our thought patterns. And I utilize the, them in conjunction with tapping a lot. Yes. I would love for you to speak a little bit more on the oils and how they can actually alter. I'd love to know more, please. Yeah. Well, it's really interesting. So essential oils have, are very versatile and I don't think people realize that they think it's just something that smells nice. And I understand that I thought the same thing, but there's so much more you can do with them. They all, every single oil has a spiritual, physical, and emotional component to it. For example, I teach a class on chakras and essential oils. So like which chakra utilizes which oil the best and how to use it because that is such a fast way to balance ourselves and our bodies and then also the then the physical aspect is something that I've been able to really empower myself and as well many other women within their households so that they can take care of themselves and their families a little bit easier a little bit less expensive but even like I find I'm just not like Like I don't have to go to the doctors as often. I don't have to go to the pharmacy as often. So I feel like I'm saving a lot of time as well. But yeah, essential oils are a great way to move through things in a quick way. But also there's just like, some people also have really great memories associated to scent. And so when we continue to use them in a positive way, 
those scents, we can just reintroduce those and they can really be, you know, very uplifting, a great way to start your day, a great way to end your day. Yeah. And so that's, that's how I use them. I use them in various ways. Yes. There's so many ways because you hit the nail on the head with sometimes you think, oh, this lavender it just smells so good. So I'm just going to use the lavender. But then it seems like what you're saying is there's so many more benefits that we can oh. look at. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like lavender alone, like bug bites, calming, blood, high blood pressure. It's the oil of communication. So throat chakra. Yeah. Like so many. Oh, <laughs> That's just like amazing. four or five things. Yeah, yes, right off that, the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, that smell for me. Yes, that smell for me was, I did not even know about, I knew about the bug bite, but I did not know that the throat chakra is connected to lavender. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. there's, there's so much that we can do for ourselves that we really can't as taking care of ourselves, but also it's even working <laughs> deeper. And mm -hmm. I think having that knowing of that it is working deeper for us than just that smell it gives us that push to use it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. absolutely. What, yeah, what is your favorite? Does it depend on the mood? <laughs> It does. So I would say um, my favorite, like my usual go-tos, I love, love, love eucalyptus. It's actually a heart chakra oil as well. And I love rose essential oil. I'd say those are like my top two right now that I um, I'll just do like a crisscross of rose over my heart. I use eucalyptus in my diffuser at night, for example, for, you know, it's very good for just respiratory and oh my gosh, it just smells so good. <laughs> so good. Yes. Yeah, I just love it. Yeah. And you do have to just ensure that whatever company you use, that they're very transparent in their testing and such. I, um, it's not a regulated industry. So you do have to be mindful of that as well. So just uh, do your research. Definitely. Yes. yes. So, oh my gosh. So I would love to know, because you're using oils and you're using EFT and you're using them together. How do you find that they work so well together with aligning the, yeah, the different meridians? Is it... <laughs> Do you find that they, I know they work together so well, but how do you find that they work together so well? You know, I haven't really, I guess, tested that. I just use them together and it just, I, I just find it really, the outcome's always been really positive, yeah. but there's also been positive outcomes with just using oils or just using tapping. So I think for me, it's just kind of gives it that extra punch, right? That extra powerful and maybe even like a bit faster movement within our bodies between the two modalities. And same with Reiki. Like if I always have essential oils, like in a diffuser, when I do a Reiki session, because I'll actually be able to check beforehand what that person might be going through. So I can choose the oils that they need for that session. Yeah. Speak to us because with energy, so there is the EFT reality and then the oils. And then now we're speaking on Reiki a little bit. Please speak to us a bit about that. Oh gosh, Reiki is so powerful. It's like, I, I've had to learn to protect myself a little bit more because I'll take on a lot of their stuff when I'm working on them. Right. So, so that was the learning curve, <laughs> but it's funny. I haven't used, it's interesting. I haven't used it in really like a business sense because I find that a lot of the stuff that women are working on, it can be tied to business, but a lot of times it's personal. And a lot of stuff of what I do, and I say this a lot, actually, is that what I teach is going to seep into your personal life because it really changes like your outlook, your, like your perspective on life, on the way you handle situations. So, and, cause that's what it did for me. Um, even my relationships are so much better. And so, yeah, so I feel like, well, I guess I would say the one thing that I work with women most on would be worth their worthiness and or lack of at the time. So I would say between tapping and Reiki, that is something that can help them a lot and help them work through that in ways that just talking it out, for example, might not work as, as well. Like it helps of course, but sometimes there's just these extra things you have to do to get through them. And so I find the energetic work and the tapping to be very helpful and useful. You are speaking to worthiness and or lack thereof. Yes, that one is such a big topic, isn't it, for, for women? Oh, huge, huge, yeah. And, yes, and so, yes, if you would feel called to speak on that worthiness piece just a little bit as far as what the moms that are feeling, like they're feeling a little bit unworthy and they are wanting to do this energetic work and they're thinking, where do I begin? Hmm, that's a hard one. Because so 
what I did was, okay, I did, I did the tapping workshop. So I feel like just in my own experience, that was really effective and changed that thought pattern in an hour. What I did after that was I combined them. So like this person who did the workshop, I mentioned she's a Reiki master. So I actually went to see her for a session and we did tapping and then we did Reiki, which kind of, she says, kind of finishes the clearing. So I, that's what I've done. So I've done like sessions where I'm like, you know what? I feel like we need to tap on this first and then let's do Reiki. So it depends on your comfort with energetics. So tapping is actually used by like psychotherapists, for example. So that could be something that people just might be more comfortable doing. Reiki can be a little woo woo for people. And I totally get that because I thought the same thing. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I would suggest tapping is like easier to understand and comprehend if this is really new to you. If it's not, Reiki is just a really cool experience because as a practitioner, like I can, you know, I can see things. I get visualizations, I get symbols, I get feelings, I am I get people, you know, loved ones that come into the room. And so so if you're like into that stuff, Reiki's amazing and such a cool experience. <laughs> I love that you're speaking to the woo. So yes, yeah, so a lot of people think energetic, then automatically they go to that. Like, no, I'm not gonna need that. That is woo. And what would you say to the person that is thinking, no, there's no way. <laughs> yeah. So I always say there's many different types of Reiki practitioners. Like there are Reiki practitioners that they just believe in literally the energy within us. And that's it. I do believe in the spirit world. I do believe in the universe, God, spirit, and angels. And so I utilize that and incorporate that in my Reiki sessions. But as a, like a client, they don't have to, they don't have to participate in that way. They can participate however they see fit. If they're just like, this is just an exchange of energy from one person to another, then you can just do that. And that's fine. Cause it'll still work. It's all about being open to it and open to it working for you. That is what's going to actually make it successful. Yeah. So I would love to speak on energy a little bit, because that is mm -hmm. what you're all about. It's that energy yeah. is <laughs> that talking about that energy, we are all energy. And so th this is why this works. And I would love for you to speak on that. Yeah, it, it's such a broad topic, I think, but it's incredible how, as you become more attuned to it, you feel things within your body. Mm -hmm. So I would say, that's why I always say, like, listen to your body. Like when you're making a decision, what is your body telling you? Does it feel good? Does it feel light? Does it feel like you have a pit in your stomach? Do you feel sick? Like there's, there's all of these ways to tell, you know, what that decision should be. Mm -hmm. So that plays a part in the energetics work, right? And that's why like when I do a session, I can feel that back sometimes depending on what's going on with them. I can sometimes feel the physical ailments or emotional situations that they're going through. So yeah, it's, I guess it's, I guess it's like, it's so hard to explain because it's like, it's tangible to me now but it wasn't before yeah. because when you become a Reiki practitioner, you get attunements they're called, which really elevates your consciousness and abilities. So that's when I really started to understand what it felt like and what yeah. I guess that kind of looked like in quotation marks. <laughs> so that feeling piece of feeling yourself and feeling what energy, what mood you're in, that's your tell all. Yeah. And even like, if you notice you're talking to somebody, let's say, and you're getting very tired, it's because they are sucking the life out of you, that there's somebody who's like a vampire, right? They drain that energy from you because they probably have some issues. They probably have some insecurities. They're probably someone who's like, who has to be the center of attention all the time. And so that can be very tiring for us. You know, another way would be like, we were living in the city in Toronto for about six years. And the last year we were there, I was like, I always felt very heavy, like my body and my shoulders, like things just felt very heavy. And we moved more to like a more, I guess the country and oh my gosh, like I feel so much lighter here. It like physically, you can feel mm -hmm. the difference and my kids and my husband feel the same. So it's very noticeable when you're attuned to it. Yeah, so your environment, so it's not just you physically, it's the people that you're surrounding yourself with. Mm -hmm. It's the environment you're putting yourself in. That is what's going to contribute to your energy. And oh, the level. Sure. That makes so much sense when you put it in that way. If you're, like you say, if you're living in the city and then you go to, let's say out in nature, like it's yeah. kind of like that contrast. 
Mm -hmm. Yes, that's huge. And so, yes, I am loving this topic and this conversation. Oh, good. So I'm glad. About, <laughs> yes, I am loving it so much because it's, I think once we connect that our energy is what creates the life that we want to live, I think that is the piece that, that you were saying even for you at the beginning, that was the piece that shifted so much for you. Mm -hmm. And so I love that we're having this conversation on energy and high vibration and keeping yourself attuned by using these modalities. And so I appreciate you so much, Amy, for coming on today and speaking on this. And I always ask for the last question, if there is anything after this conversation on your heart that you feel called to share with the listeners, these are moms, these are mompreneurs that are, are working through everyday life. Yeah, actually, I do. It's funny that you say that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just something that I was sort of just thinking about is that when I was talking about being in like a season of your life and, you know, just know that whoever's listening, if you are going through a really difficult season, that there are tools out there that can help you and that you are worth taking care of just as much as your child or your partner. And so I just, I just want to leave that really because again, that's something that women really struggle with. And, you know, that's from years of living in the society we live in and putting the, us in that box. So. Oh my gosh. Yes. You hit that nail on the head. You are worthy <laughs> of being taken care of. Yes. Thank you so much, Amy. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun Show. I hope you enjoyed yourself and got a little, little gems, little pieces of gold that you are taking to heart, that you are not just listening, but you're gonna do something about it. I want you to be fired up. So yes, so we come once a week, come back, listen to us here. We are on all podcasts, places you listen. We are also on YouTube if you like to watch the show at Josie Wheatman. You can find us at Make Life Fun. And I am so stoked. And also come follow me, come play with me on Instagram at Josie Wheatman. I am dancing. I am showing my sweet baby. <laughs> and we're just having a ball. We're making life fun. And so come hang out with us. And thank you again for listening. Please subscribe to the show follow us, leave us a review because the more you love up on me, other people can find the show and love up on us. And we build this community that is one of love and goodness. Also, I am taking clients. I'm taking one-on-one -on -one coaching clients. Like I said, we're talking about Bloom. We have a membership coming up and all the beautiful things. So there is a few ways that you can connect with me on that. So we have my website, which is backrosecoaching.com. You can go on there as well as you can join the mail list. So right now I have a 21 day raise your vibration challenge going on. It's an email challenge completely offhand. You wake up every day and you get these tidbits of goodness that light you up. So why not? It's a 21 day high vibration challenge. It's tools, it's simple, it doesn't require much. Most of them, if you want a little taste, is placing your hand on your heart and telling yourself you love yourself today. So yes, so come hang out with me, jump into my world. I've got you.